Thanks to Birch Living for sponsoring this video. We are in the process of making over our bedroom and I'm hoping to replace the Ikea dressers that we have been using as nightstands with something more traditional that's got a lot more character. So when I saw this antique serpentine beauty pop up on my Facebook Marketplace feed, I had to have it. I started out with the intention of restoring this piece back to a natural wood finish, but this dresser had other things in mind and my project took a major turn halfway through. When we moved out to the East Coast about six months ago, we invested in brand new birch mattresses for our primary bedroom and our guest bedroom in the basement. And we are so happy with our choice. Birch is a premium mattress in a box company that makes mattresses and sleep products that are stylish, comfortable, and environmentally conscious. Their non-toxic mattresses are made in America and crafted with fair trade cotton and sustainable New Zealand wool. I'm a super hot sleeper and the organic materials in these mattresses keep me cool and help me to regulate my body temperature. And unlike synthetic mattresses, they are hypoallergenic and mildew resistant. It's also nice to know that they are Green Guard Gold certified. That is a tongue twister, but it means that they've been tested for VOCs, phthalates, and formaldehyde, and are safe for sensitive individuals with no chemical off-gassing. Each birch mattress comes with two of their EcoRest pillows made from recycled plastic bottles. They are breathable and better for the environment. But I think the thing that I love most is how easy it is to order a new mattress online and have it delivered right to your door. It comes rolled up in a box and is super easy to set up yourself. With your Birch mattress, you get a 100 night sleep trial along with a 25 year warranty. So if it makes you feel nervous to buy something that you haven't tried, you get more than three months to make sure that you love it. And if you don't, they'll pick it up from you and you'll get a full refund. We love the incredible sleep that we get in our new bed and all of our guests over the summer have said the same. So if you're looking for a new bed, make sure that you check out Birch. You can click the link below or go to birchliving.com slash Katie Scott for $400 off of your mattress plus those two free pillows. Back to this dresser that I want to turn into a nightstand. I definitely overpaid for this thing at $100, but it fits the very specific size and style that I've had in mind, and I'm going to have it for a really long time, so I think it's worth the extra splurge. It's been chalk painted, sort of. The previous owner told me she painted it in a mix of latex wall paint and drywall compound, so we're going to have to see how bad that is to get off. I love this divided top drawer, the keyholes, the dovetails, and hopefully there's some really nice wood under here that I can refinish. It looks like at some point someone tried and gave up removing whatever decorative veneer was on these drawer fronts, and the dresser stinks terribly of must, so I'm gonna have to deal with that too. I mean, it's definitely not in good condition, but I think it could have been worse. From looking at the back, I think it's all oak. The mirror is broken and I don't really want it for my bedside table anyways. So I'm just gonna get started by taking off this harp, the plastic knobs and making a bit of a more detailed assessment of things. I decided to have a go at getting this paint off with my carbide scraper instead of using chemical stripper or a ton of sandpaper and probably sanding through the veneer. It came up really nicely with this scraper and now I can see that there's some really pretty quarter sawn oak veneer on the top of this dresser. 
I worked my way around the whole thing and it only took me about an hour to get the whole body done. But when I tried to use my scraper on the drawers, it just couldn't catch on all of the lumpy bumpiness. And since the veneer on here is already obviously completely toast, I'm just going to take my sander to these. I vacuumed up all of my paint shavings and then put some 100 grit onto my sander and that should help me get rid of the rest of the paint. I really want to be able to restain this thing. So I'm going really slowly and trying to get as much of the paint out of the really deep oak grain as I can without ruining the veneer. But as I keep going here, I'm finding water stains and burn marks and really big chunks out of it. I think I should probably call it at this point, but I'm pretty determined to make my idea work. So I think I'm just going to keep plugging away. I even broke out my little detail scraper and some dental tools to try and dig the paint out of the corners and start getting it up out of the grain on the sides, which is also lifting and chipping along the bottom edge. And my little rotary tool here helped me get into all of these tight spots where my sander wouldn't fit. But while I was working on all of this, I think I knew in my heart this was not going to go my way. I sanded all of the paint and the chunks of veneer that were left on the drawer fronts using a really coarse 80 grit just to grind through all of that stuff that was left on there. And I knew from the start that the drawers were going to be rustic with all of the deep chisel gouges in them. But I did manage to clean up the dovetail joinery on the sides pretty well although the sides of the bottom drawer do need to be re-glued. I filled up a little syringe with some wood glue and got it into and around all of the finger joints. And then I just popped these back together and put a few clamps on the drawer to hold everything in place while it dried. The next part of my plan here was to re-glue the veneer on the top of the dresser that was really loose, but when I got my putty knife up under there, I could see that the substrate was also solid oak. So instead of gluing up this veneer that was already damaged and I knew I would never be able to get cleaned up enough to look good again, I decided to take a risk and just peel it all up and hopefully I could use the wood underneath. Like I said, most of this was already letting go, but the areas that were still adhered needed a little bit of extra coercion to come loose. So I grabbed an old towel and soaked it in water, and then I put my iron on its hottest setting. I used the iron to steam the veneer and melt the glue underneath so it would come away from the wood much easier. And as I took all of this off, I could see that the original top had already had a few repairs, I think with some rubber cement. So that is going to need to get cleaned up too. Things are looking good, except for this one spot where the wood was really soft and the veneer just peeled up a huge chunk with it. I ended up giving it a quick sand with some 80 grit to get through that cement and see if there was any way of saving this massive boo-boo. I thought maybe it could be okay since the drawers were already leaning super rustic and rough, but it ended up just being too much of a dent. 
a hole. Mm, it's a crater. It's a crater and I don't like it. So my next plan was to unscrew the top and I thought maybe I could flip it over and use the other side of the board. That had another thick layer of veneer on it, but it wasn't the pretty oak that was on the top. So again, I busted out my iron and my wet towel and took the time to remove all of that so that I could get down to that oak. And just my luck, the same board in the same spot on the underside did the exact same thing. And it just shredded the wood when I lifted up that piece of veneer. So now I've got a crater on the top and the bottom. Okay, let's talk this through. So I've now peeled the veneer off of the top and the bottom of the dresser top and the same spot has left me with this giant hole where the wood just shredded. Um, okay. So I have the bottom drawer that still has all of these um, scars in it. That's oak. And the top drawer is not oak. But sand it out, it's, it's pretty, but it, it doesn't match. I have the issue with the oak top. And I still haven't even gotten to the sides yet where I still have all of this paint in the grain. The legs are solid. This panel on both sides is veneer and it has the very typical, all of the edge is flaking. So I can't sand this too much more without sanding through it and having the same problem that I had with the veneer on the top. But under this is not oak, it's plywood. So the sides are wrecked. So if I get new veneer for the top, I also need new veneer for the sides. And if I'm doing the top and the sides, I should also just do the same matching veneer on both drawers. And the white oak veneer is $67 a roll. So I'd need two rolls for the top, a roll for the sides and a roll for the drawers. So that's four rolls. So that's well over $200 for veneer. Or I could do my best to patch up the flaky veneer on the bottom of the sides and hope that I can do a decent job sanding off the rest of that junk and leave the two front drawers mismatched and go get some new wood for the top. But a one by six inch wide by six foot long board is $47. And then I have to join them up and cut them out and rotor them. And I still have mismatched drawers and I still have shitty veneer on the sides. <sighs> oh, I really didn't want to paint it. I really didn't want to paint it. Oh, I think I have to paint it. I think I have to paint it. So it's official. I am changing directions. This thing is not going to cut it as my new nightstand and I'm going to get started on prepping for paint. I screwed the top of the dresser back on and yanked out the broken casters from the bottom of the legs. And because this thing still stinks, I started coating all of the interior surfaces in some clear shellac to create sort of a smell proof barrier 
And then I mixed up some all-purpose Bondo to fill in the mess on the top, the missing veneer spots on the sides, and a few other defects. Bondo hardens really fast, so once it was set, I sanded off all of my patches and made them nice and smooth. I did need to do three separate applications in my crater to get it filled and flush with the rest of the surface. And then once I had that spot sorted, I used some of Bondo's glazing filler to fill in a little bit of the grain texture on here as well. This isn't usually a necessary step and I don't usually mind the texture of wood grain showing through my paint finishes, but I was worried that the really big, super smooth patch on the top would stick out really badly if it was next to all of this deep grain texture. This glazing medium is pretty soft stuff, a lot softer than regular Bondo, so it spreads out really nicely and sort of levels off in the texture and it's really easy to sand away the excess once it's dry. If I wanted to make all of the grain texture disappear and get this thing perfectly smooth, I'd probably need to take the time to do three or four passes of it, but I felt okay after one application, so after I cleaned up all of my sanding dust, I was finally ready for paint. Since I am so over this project now and I just wanted to get it finished and move on with my life, I chose this Lily Moon Opulent paint. It's got a built-in stain blocking primer, it's got a built-in top coat, it is super smooth to brush or spray, and just overall really easy to use. One step and done. The only color I've got is this Ocean Shores blue-gray, so I gave it a really good shake up and watered down about half of the pint in a separate container. I like to spray with paints that are about the consistency of buttermilk, maybe a little bit thicker than that, but once I was feeling like it was thin enough, I strained it into my spray gun. I sprayed the first coat upside down so that I could get around all of the legs a little easier and then I flipped it over and sprayed two more coats and I just really lightly sanded in between those coats with a super fine sanding pad just to knock off any wood fibers that had raised up and were still hanging around. I ordered some new hardware from D. Lawless Hardware in the States. He's got a really nice selection of replica pieces and some modern stuff as well, but I wanted to give this back some of its pretty jewelry that it would have had originally. They're a little bit too bright and shiny though, so I really lightly sprayed all of this with some of this antique brass spray paint. And then I just kind of dabbed some of the excess off with a paper towel to give it a little bit of a patinaed look. Once that was dry, I put it all on and brought this troublemaker inside for her glamour shots.
This thing was a nightmare right from the very beginning. I definitely bit off more than I could chew, but I think it's not too bad now. Not at all what I wanted it to be, but it cleaned up enough to get at least one more life. It's still got a ton of character and plenty of flaws to show its age and tell its story. And there's always something really charming about that. Anywho, I'm off to start scrolling Facebook Marketplace again for another nightstand contender. If you're looking for more furniture makeover inspiration, go check out this video and I'll catch you all next time.